Good morning. Welcome back to GP Outdoors and welcome back to part two of my woodshed build. Before we start today, let me catch up on where we're at so far. So first off, my neighbor guy and I weeded through all of the great submissions we've received from a number of subscribers. We decided on a plan for my woodshed. I called a good friend of mine, an excavator, and he came over and dumped me a truckload of gravel. I talked to him about that gravel and what type would be best to put down as a foundation below the shed because I wasn't really sure what would work best. He strongly convinced me that the best stuff to use is what we call crusher run up here. It's basically a smaller size gravel, but it also includes the dust. And so when you lay it down on the ground and you run it over and it rains a few times, the dust and the small gravel compacts into a really hard surface. So that's what we chose. He dropped me off a full load. In the first video, you'll see that I finalized a spot on the property and I began clearing that spot. Using my pole saw and my chainsaw, I took out a few of the dead standing that was there. We got the Kubota out and we began excavating and digging out that area and trying to level it off as best as I could. And then I started dropping the crusher run and of course running it over with the tractor to try to compact it a bit. And on today's part two, we're gonna finalize leveling off that gravel and we're gonna drop my little foundation blocks that we're gonna start building the floor of the shed on. And an important note, if you're a new subscriber, please remember that these are not instructional videos. I've never before tried to attempt to build a woodshed by myself. I am getting a little bit of help from a neighbor who has, and I'm gonna be doing some things that I've never tried before. So I'll do the best I can, but please remember, the way you see me doing it is just the way I'm doing it. It may not mean it's the right way to do it. But I hope you'll stick around and I hope you'll find it enjoyable. Let's get to work. I'm just setting posts for me to be able to find level. Right now I just need the four corners basically, or the area about, so I can get this whole place leveled out. And then we'll take it from there. My neighbor guy asked me to try something new, which I've also never done before. And that's to use a water level to try to find level on this ground. The four stakes that I put out are well beyond the footprint of the 12 by eight shed, just so that I can keep them there while I'm trying to grade. But we're going to give this water level a try and then we're also going to try and test it out afterwards with a laser level just to see how close it was. If you're anything like me, you're probably having flashbacks from high school physics, which by the way, I didn't do very well at. But basically how this works is you've got water in here, got a rubber hose. I filled it up, I've bled all the air out of the hose and it works on a basic principle. Wherever you put this hose, the meniscus of the water inside this hose will always sit level with the level of the water in this pail. The nice thing about it is it's got a long, it's probably a good 20, 25 foot hose. So unlike a laser level that doesn't go all the way around and you have to keep moving it, you can go pretty much anywhere around and wherever you hold the hose, wherever the water level is, it will always stay consistently level with the water in the pail. That's the principle. I would much rather, at least in this application, I'd prefer to add gravel than to try to scrape away ground. So I've tried to find the high point here at the north side of the shed build. That's where I'm going to place the bucket. And that way, if I need to level anywhere in here, I can add gravel and pack it down as opposed to being in a position of having to scrape out gravel. I'd prefer more gravel. We'll give it a minute to settle. Wow, that was a learning experience. I used the water level, and of course at this end, at the north end, my marks are very low to the ground. In fact, the one in the back corner is about 
two, two and a half inches from the ground. The marks on these stakes back here are more like about 10 inches. Just goes to show that, you know, I can't see level very well. Not that I didn't trust my neighbor guy with this water level, but I pulled out the laser level, stuck it on this post, and those marks are absolutely accurate. So it looks like I've got a lot of work to do, a lot more gravel work than I expected to get this level. It's gonna be a longer day than I expected. I think I'm pretty close if I'm not pretty much there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a little string, I'm gonna tap a few nails into the markers on each of those four posts, draw the string between it and see if I can level it out or if I'm really still short of gravel. I think I should We're going to be using these 11 by 11 blocks to support our floor. So I think it's important that we've got a good reasonably level area and then of course we'll just have to adjust with more gravel or take away in the spots that we place down these blocks. I think that'll work. That's the plan anyways. So I've been pretty fortunate. It's been about a week and a half and we've had a ton of rain, which means that this stuff is really packed down nice and hard. Also was talking to a friend of mine, suggested just for the sake of the future, that it might be worth one or two buckets of gravel to fill in the edges around this pad right to the natural berm of the earth. Pack it down so that the pad itself has kind of a natural stop or a natural enclosure on three sides. Then it makes sense. Two buckets of gravel, I'm just gonna smooth them out, tamp them down. And then let's get our stones laid out and positioned. You'd almost think I knew what I was doing. 
but I don't. Level both ways. It's a good start. So let me explain to you my chain of thought here. If you remember, I cleared a much larger area than I actually needed for the shed in here, because I wasn't sure what I was going to find underground. Fortunately, at the north end here, which is the high end, if you'll remember the, the property here slopes south. I don't have a lot of gravel here because I had some nice hard rocky ground under here. I know that the shed build requires a one foot eave or overhang on the top of the shed. So I know that I want to be far away from this maple tree. So what I've done is I've just measured out three feet. I know that this seems to be the hardest or most level ground. So I've started with my first footing here, tampered the ground down, dropped my block, and of course, fortunately, was level both ways. That wasn't on purpose, I think that was luck. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna take a look at where I want the shed to face. My property line is on an angle to my driveway. I know I need an inset from the driveway, which is why I've started in the very back corner here. And that way I know that the overhang on the front of the shed will be well back from the edge of the driveway. <laughs> Perfect. You know, I'll tell you, all that extra work I did, trying to level out the gravel first, especially using that uh, water level, really helped a lot now. All I had to do is tamp down here. I just had to add a tiny little bit under here on one side, and both of my blocks are level both ways. And my eight-foot pressure treated is level right across. I'm in good shape. Now we need to estimate and try to figure out where the end blocks go. Okay, should have 14.42 feet between. Let's convert that to inches. Let's see if we can square it out. Perfect. I measured between both ends and all four corners, as well as diagonally between them, so I know I'm square. I haven't leveled out the blocks yet, but I've got the four corners in, and now what I'm going to do is use these two two by sixes, they're eight footers. I'm going to use them as ledger boards just to run strings across so I can get my intermediate blocks all put in. There's my lines for the rest of my foundation block. Oh, that storm has definitely hit us now, so I'm going to start wrapping up. But I'm going to finish up the video for part two today. I've got my strings across. I've got 12 foundation blocks in total. So you're going to have two, four of them here, and two more here in the middle. I'm going to mark along my lines with some marker paint to make sure that where I place my middle blocks, they're going to line up with one of the floor joists on each side. I'm going to have that all done so that when we start part three, you'll see the finished product. Once I get them in place, I'll go back, level them. I'm going to go grab that laser level to make sure that all the way across I've maintained level because I know it's critically important that when you're building anything, it has to start off being square and level. And then the rest of the build is much easier, I've been told. If you're off or you're not square, it starts to show up in spades later. <laughs> all right, she's coming down. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it today. I imagine there was probably a better or simpler way of doing it, but that's the best way I know how, so hopefully it was helpful for some. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to know when I'm posting more videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful and safe week with your families. Please be kind, and I'll see you again on the next one. Cheers.